Hello and welcome to Welch Lab Chemistry. Today we will be utilizing a reductive cyclization or catagon cyclization to form an N-annulated PDI monomer. For full synthetic details, please see the paper linked in the video description. This compound has some unusual optical properties that we will explore briefly after we isolate the product. This reaction also has a mechanism that isn't as well known as many of the other reactions we have done in the series, and I will go over the mechanism at the end of this video. In the paper that we are following, dimethylformamide is used as a solvent, but since there is some evidence in other literature that higher boiling solvents increases the yield in this type of reaction, we are running this reaction in dimethylacetamide. For this reaction, you will need nitro-PDI, which we made in a previous video, triphenylphosphine, dimethylacetamide, as well as hexanes and dichloromethane for washings. To a three-neck round-bottom flask with a stir bar is added perylene diamide and triphenylphosphine. This reaction is done in an inert atmosphere of nitrogen and purging is more thoroughly done with a three-neck flask instead of a normal round-bottom flask. Next, the reaction is stoppered and purged with nitrogen for 10 minutes. It isn't in the shot, but there is a vent needle in the septa on the top of the reflux condenser. After the solids have been thoroughly purged, dried dimethylacetamide is added via cannula transfer to half fill the flask. Once all the reagents have been added, the reaction is heated to a gentle reflux for 24 hours, during which the reaction turned from red to purple and then back to red. I had some troubles maintaining steady stirring and the reaction splashed a bit which is why there is some material in the joints of the glassware. After a day at reflux, a TLC is run in dichloromethane. As is my standard method, the left spot is the starting material, the middle is co-spot, and the right is the reaction mixture. The TLC shows complete consumption of the starting material. The reaction is allowed to cool to room temperature. After the reaction is cooled, the mixture is transferred to a round bottom flask using a small amount of dichloromethane to transfer, and the solvent is removed on a rotovap. Removing dimethylformamide on a rotovap is challenging, but is doable with a bath at 80 to 90 degrees Celsius, as high a vacuum as the rotovap can attain, and a non self washing bump trap. Once all the dimethylacetamide is removed, 40 milliliters of dichloromethane is added and heated to boiling with a heat gun to dissolve the residue. After the mixture starts boiling, 120 milliliters of hexanes is added to the mixture to selectively precipitate the product, which is then filtered and washed with more of the same solvent mixture. We are still experimenting with optimizing the workup of this reaction further, and it is possible that crashing the product out of dichloromethane with methanol is a more effective method for isolation. After drying the product in air overnight, we obtained 5.4 grams of NHPDI, which corresponds to a yield of 86%. This product is only very poorly soluble in most organic solvents and can be challenging to clean from glassware. We found that the residue is readily removed by treatment with basic alcohols. We believe that this removes the proton from the pyrolic nitrogen, forming a salt that is more highly soluble in organic solvents. Additionally, upon deprotonation of this compound, the color changes from a pale red to a deep blue that has strong red fluorescence. Due to the poor solubility of this compound, the NMR spectrum is considerably more dilute than the previous compounds. As with previous compounds, we can see water and chloroform at 1.5 and 7.2 ppm respectively, both of which are due to the solvent the NMR is run in and are not impurities in this product. The aromatic region shows three peaks, with the leftmost corresponding to the NH proton and the other peaks corresponding to the other six aromatic protons. Since we have a high yield of pure NH perylene diimide, we can move on to the next step, which is the alkylation of N-annulated PDI. Please subscribe, like, and comment. I hope to see you next time for the alkylation of NH perylene diimide. In this reaction, the nitro group is reduced by two equivalents of triphenylphosphine, and two equivalents of triphenylphosphine oxide is produced as a side product. First, the triphenylphosphine attacks the oxygen on the nitro group. The oxidized triphenylphosphine is kicked off by the other NO double bond reforming. 
Next, a second equivalent of triphenylphosphine attacks the other oxygen and is kicked off in a similar manner to form the intermediate nitrine. The nitrine is highly electrophilic and undergoes electrophilic aromatic substitution to give the de-aromatized intermediate. After a proton transfer, the final product is formed. This mechanism is what has been proposed in literature, and though the exact order of the steps is unknown, the overall mechanism is agreed on. Thank you for watching to the very end. I hope to see you next time for the alkylation.